Coming up on Mountain News this morning, the city of Louisville continues to show its support for an injured officer and his family. And the people of Knott County mourn the loss of an important voice in the world of local sports. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Chas Gayhart. It is 459 on Tuesday, April 25th. Let's go over and check in with Brandon. And Brandon, I had to wear a coat again. Yeah, another, <laughs> another chilly start this morning. It is. We actually had a freeze warning in effect for mm -hmm. some folks and then a frost advisor for others. So again, it's back and forth out there this morning. There's going to be some frost on your car, even though the clouds are trying to move in just a little bit now. Current conditions outside the WIMT studios here in Hazard. We see not a whole lot going on, but you see those temperatures on the chilly side this morning as we head out the door. We're continuing to watch that trend this morning, and you'll see again a lot of 30s, a lot of 20s out there. 28 Irvin, 29 Clintwood. Try to see if there's any more 20s out there this morning. 39 in Monticello. 35 Middlesbrough, 31 in Manchester, 32 Hazard, 31 in Wayne, and 31 in Grundy. Free, a freeze warning until 9 for all the counties in purple, which is the majority of the area. Frost advisory till 9 till basically uh, from Menifee to Campbell County, Tennessee, and west. So keep that in mind as you're heading out the door. Give yourself some time to get those cars scraped off. A little extra coffee to max when we need it will be needed today as you head through the first part of your day. Now, Clouds and sunshine. You may have more of one than the other at times, but I do believe we'll make it into the 60s this afternoon as the sun peaks out a little bit later. Chas? Thanks, Brandon. An East Tennessee firefighter is dead after a crash involving a fire truck in Claiborne County. Officials with Tennessee Highway Patrol say the crash happened on Cedar Fork Road in the Taswell community. They say the fire truck went off the side of the road while 27-year-old Roy Sewell Jr. was driving. The fire truck then went over an embankment, causing it to roll over and land on its top. Sewell was killed in the crash. No other injuries were reported. The man accused of killing a southeastern Kentucky police officer is asking for a change of venue for his trial. Casey Bird of Oneida, Tennessee, is charged with murder and drug driving in the death of London officer Logan Medlock. The Herald Leader reports an attorney for Bird says he can't get a fair and impartial trial because of Medlock's status in the community. The petition also cites, quote, overwhelming publicity of the case. Byrd is scheduled to appear in court for a pretrial conference later this week. Kentucky Department of Criminal Justice Training Commissioner Nikolai Jalek visited Monticello Police Officer Jeremy Thompson this past weekend. Jalek delivered two and a half thousand dollar check to help Thompson's family as he recovers from a serious motorcycle crash earlier this month. The money comes from a fund when Kentuckians choose to purchase the special license plate. Community leaders in Louisville are showing their support for an injured officer and his family unveiling a massive banner in the city. 20 by 30 foot banners of Louisville's heroes hang on buildings across downtown. Now, Officer Nicholas Wilt joins their ranks. He was shot in the head at the Old National Bank mass shooting. He fought through brain surgery and is now fighting through pneumonia. He remains in critical but stable condition. Lawmakers say they hope his story leads to changes. There's been some very good conversations already um, about making some common sense changes um, that will hopefully make everyone safer, including our law enforcement officers who serve and protect. The Louisville Metro Police Foundation continues to raise money for Wilt's family. 100% of what is raised goes to his family. Knott County is mourning the loss of a longtime local radio and television broadcaster. Harold Mullins died Sunday at the age of 72. Mullins was a sports broadcaster in Knott County for more than 20 years, getting his start in radio, then eventually transitioning to work in television at Hometown 24 in Hindman. Those who knew him best say Mullins' impact was even larger than his on-air presence. Everybody loved Harold. Uh, the way he did the games. He was so good at it. Uh, I really think in a different time and place, Harold probably would have went big time. And I mean big time, he was that good. Mullins' best friend Larry Drum Thornsbury says because so many kids have looked up to Mullins during his time in broadcasting, his legacy will live on. Arrangements for Mullins have not yet been finalized. 
Former longtime state representative Hubert Collins has died. Collins was born in Johnson County. He died at Highlands ARH on April 21st. He served the 97th district from 1991 to 2017. His visitation is scheduled for this evening from 5 to 8, and a second visitation will be Wednesday from 9 a.m. until 1 p.m. The funeral will follow the visitation on Wednesday. Jones Preston Funeral Home is handling the arrangements. Hubert Collins was 86 years old. Now that we are only a few weeks away from the primary election on May 16th, clerk's offices throughout the region are preparing for early voting. Perry County Clerk Wayne Napier says his staff has added an additional early voting location this year. WYMT's Olivia Calfee talked with him about his expectations for the election and what people may need, may need to know before heading to the polls to cast their ballot. Perry County Clerk Wayne Napier says 19,290 people are registered to vote in the county this year, saying his staff is adding an additional early voting location at the Perry County Public Library. We just thought that would help out the crowds on election day, give people a chance to come in early and vote. So we just thought it would help the community. Yeah. Napier says that early voting begins May 11th and will be open until the 13th and they decided to add this additional early voting location to also help their office understand what works best in preparation for the presidential election in 2024. I know when the last president's election, it was crazy for early voting, and we're trying to uh, kind of warm up to the next year presidential election just to see how it goes. So we want to try to have more early voting spots for that. Voters only have to bring a form of identification, and he says with their new e-poll book system, they are expecting voting to move faster this year. Driver's license, just anything to show who they are. And, and we've, we've got new e-poll books, and Quigs, we bring it up, it shows their location, where they vote, all that good stuff. And for individuals with an absentee ballot, a drop box is already open for people to cast their votes. All you have to do is come up the steps, front porch of the courthouse, we have the drop box. Just push this in to drop your ballot. We check it every day. We also have 911 cameras out here, 24-hour uh, surveillance, so you don't have to worry about your ballot when it goes inside. And that was Olivia Calfee reporting. Napier says on May 11th and 12th, the polls will be open for early voting from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., and they will be open on the 13th from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Well, thanks for getting your day started with us here on Mountain News this morning. Coming up, state governments ask for help with tracking down and taking out a tiny pest, creating a big problem along the East Coast. And another cold morning across the mountains will lead to a somewhat warmer afternoon, but rain chances are on the way in the next couple of days. I'll track them out for you in about three minutes.